Welcome to the Make Ready with the Experts podcast. I'm your host, Fernando Coelho. We're here at Pantio Studios bringing you the very best from in and around the firearms industry, covering topics like guns, gear, firearms training, self-defense, and so much more. Everything from industry insights about the latest gear and training techniques, to hunting, survival, and empty hands. But this isn't just about the guns, folks. This is about the stories. The military, law enforcement, and civilian stories of heroics protecting our country, fellow citizens, friends, and neighbors. Here I am with Dan with TACMED Solutions. And we had just finished filming three brand new instructional videos. So, Dan. Yes, sir. What do you think of what we just did? That was a lot of fun. Uh, it's been a while. Like you said, the world's been closed down. Uh, I'm the training manager at TAC Med Solutions, so normally I'm out on the trade circuit, going to training events, running classes, doing our own videos, but definitely the operational tempo for the last year kind of came to a screeching halt. So this was really the first opportunity to get back out and get in front of students, cameras, and put some good material together. Uh, I've enjoyed working with you guys. It's been fascinating to see how you guys put a show together. Um, a lot of folks have no idea what goes on behind the scenes and just an absolutely amazing crew that you have. And, and I learned a whole lot about shooting videos that I didn't know about before as far as some of the terminology and techniques. So I appreciate you schooling me up along the way on that side of things as much as I was able to come out here and hopefully impart some medical information. Awesome. Tell me, uh, medical, it's been, Jesus, I think it's been like eight years mm -hmm. since we did a medical video and um, the demand has always been there. Mm -hmm. It's always been uh, circumstances for us to get videos done. I'm happy we're able to get these done. Um, tell me the importance of the medical videos. So what I tell people is medicine is a really important topic, but it's not as cool and sexy as some of the other things that you all do. And most folks would love to spend hours upon hours on the range with some of the, the big name talent that you bring in from that space. And they would do that day in and day out, day in and day out. But when you say medical, yeah, we, need, we know it's important, we wanna do it, but I wanna go do that instead. Yeah. Medical always seems to get bumped down. That being said, when someone takes a round, medicine becomes the, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Everything else suddenly, the, the charts get inverted and now medicine is, is the most important. And just like any other skill, it's perishable. Um, it's hard to recall under stress. Um, so it's hard to get students to get excited about it sometimes, to stay consistent with it, to stay current with it. Um, because if they ever have to put this in place, just just like the shooting part of it. If somebody ever has a negligent discharge or they intentionally have to shoot someone, that's going to be probably one of the most serious days of their life. Mm -hmm. And the medical component of it is hand in hand. You know, survive whatever the tactical situation was, stop the threat. Now we've got somebody spurting out pretty red blood and we need to save that person's life. The fight's not over, it's just changed into a different stage and a different skill set. And you need to be as proficient medically as you are with your firearm. Well, and what's also important is we were able to cover three different topics. Mm -hmm. We covered uh, concealed carry for one video. Mm -hmm. We covered hunting, mm -hmm. different scenario. S almost the same kind of wounds to a degree, but mm -hmm. different scenario. Uh, you're in a tree stand, you're out hunting with a buddy, uh, Dick Cheney's with you. Shit happens. Shot him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, of course, why we're here at Lake Murray, maritime. I yes. Mean, a lot of guys go out on boats and, you know, stuff happens. And so this really worked out well. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy we were able to work with uh, Tactical Medical Solutions mm -hmm. to make this happen. Um, for we were very viewers. humbled and honored to be here as well. Make sure that your folks know that this has been an amazing opportunity for us as well. So thank you for the invitation. No, I appreciate that. And um, for our listeners and viewers and those uh, that put up with me to hear this stuff, give me more about 
attack vent solutions. Everyone's always worried about the latest, greatest widget and gadget for their carbine or pistol, but now we're talking about tourniquets, we're talking about first aid kits, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. Give me a little bit about the company. So Tactical Medical Solutions was founded by Ross Johnson and he came up through the ranks in United States Army uh, from Airborne to Green Beret to Delta Force and he was both a sniper and a medic and basically what I would say is the idea of Tactical Medical Solutions was born on probably one of the worst days of his career and he had some equipment fail uh, that was issued to him and he obviously didn't like that so he spent the rest of that tour basically developing what would become the first generation of the soft T tourniquet. Um, really unique design at the time very different from the other things that were out there and he started earning some pretty significant contracts including some through the DOD uh, Department of Defense and the Army basically let him out of his contract early because it was beneficial to the Army for him to go move forward with tactical medical solutions. This is about 2003 mm -hmm. and that's how the company started literally working out of his house, working out of his garage, even him sewing some of the first tourniquets that went out the door. In fact just outside my office in the building is the actual sewing machine that he used to sew some of the first uh, tourniquets that were made. Um, and it's just taken off from there from tourniquets to bandages to full line of nylon to uh, patient evacuation platforms and the company's just grown and grown and grown as the as the techniques and the technology have improved and adapted to the demands uh, the mission requirements that are out there uh, Ross and the company were able to keep up and not just keep up but sometimes take the lead and be very very uh, changing for the uh, industry um, grew to the point where there were some really significant acquisitions along the way. So we are not just a medical component company now, but we also have a division of armor. So we produce our own body armor. Uh, there was a lot of companies out there focusing on armor that was great for the military, great for law enforcement, but there was no one that was really doing anything that tailored to EMS and fire. So that is the space that we try to focus on, NFPA 3000 uh, Rescue Task Force guidelines to be able to provide armor for firefighters and EMS that are now going into warm zones on critical calls. We also have a simulation uh, section, uh, full body mannequins that are just absolutely amazing as far as the technology goes. It's as close to working on a real human being as you can make it without it being a real person. And the more realistic you can make training, the better of an imprint that's going to be. Um, and every student that I've ever worked with that's gotten to work on one of those simulators, once they've gotten a taste of that, they realize how much of a difference that level of technology made for them. Um, so it's been really awesome to watch the company grow and adapt to the needs and demands that are still out there in the field. Now, uh, company is based here in South Carolina, correct? Yep, we're in Anderson, South Carolina. Very cool, very cool. I have nothing but the utmost respect for that kind of company because um, firearms training is important, but so is keeping people alive. Absolutely. So, um, now, don't you have some pretty big clients like NYPD and others? We have many of the largest police departments that are across the country. Of the 10 largest police departments, we service the top seven, NYPD being the big one. Um, and we are all across the United States and throughout the world. Um, we're doing really, really well in that space. Awesome, awesome. Stand by. He's coming like right at us. That's fucking epic. <laughs> yeah. And now we've called in the medevac. <laughs> oh, he's turning.
That's pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, you know the cameras they have on those are insane. My brother, he flies They got like, Blade Runner cameras on there. He probably there. said, oh, it's a camera. Yeah, yeah. He sure. hangs. He knew he was fucking up our shot. Oh, yeah. He ain't done yet. He's, he's coming back he's again. He's coming back. <laughs> he's coming back for the kill shot. <laughs> that is awesome. So here we are trying to film. And, you know... What do you normally have? Soccer moms and kids and, and sailboats. You know, sailboats nice and, quiet. and you know, what do we get? We get a military helicopter uh, coming back. An Apache by. helicopter, and it looks like he's coming back. He didn't get enough on the first pass. Yeah, he's, he's yeah this is this is awesome. He's really. I bet he's got know. fortunate son playing on his headset. Yeah, yeah get that bird. <laughs> I love this. Show off. You know, not impressed. I want you right over here over the water. Yeah. Wait, no, wait, no. Making, making the mist come up on wait. either side. No, no. wait, cameras get wet. No, no. <laughs> They're not rentals. <laughs> yeah, we'll put you there. Right there. So, are we good? Here we are, trying to do our video podcast, and we have the joy of a helicopter that continues to fly over us, but it actually is pretty badass, so I can't complain. I love this. That's pretty neat. I mean, that is badass. There's nothing like having a gunship over you, you know? <laughs> Walther Arms was founded by Carl Walther in 1886, and 135 years later, Walther continues to innovate. While many know Walther from their PPK and P38 pistols, today they have pioneered striker-fired pistols with their PPQ and PDP. And let's not forget their steel frame Q4 and Q5. For info on what Walther offers, visit their website at waltherarms.com. If you're looking for outdoor gear for hunting, camping, hiking, or even cooking, head over to Sportsman's Guide. They have everything you need, and then some. When the time came to film season two of Wilderness to Table with Chef Bree, Sportsman's Guide was able to provide all the cooking and hunting gear we needed. And they can help you. Check out sportsmansguide.com today. So, as far as the, you don't just manufacture, the products you also offer training that is correct um, we have at the very basic offering we have a, an online learning management system we call it TACMED University so normally I'm not a big fan of online training as just the only way to deliver training I think it has its place it's very useful um, but we've done a really good job bringing in outside people that are experts in their fields. Like we brought in a nurse anesthetist to do a whole series on nothing but airway management. For a true medic level provider, mm -hmm. it's fully medically geeked out. It's awesome. Um, so it can really offer some good things, especially in the last year we ran with uh, TACMED University and did a lot of really good content to help fill the void of training that was out there during the last year. Um, but we also do in-person training when we have a large scale project that's stepping off. We will come in and do a train the trainer type block of delivery for an agency. Uh, if they're getting into all of our components and it's all new to them, we'll come in and instruct their training cadre so that they know how to then go forward and train their force. All of our mannequin simulators come with onboard training that require um, some significant knowledge to know how to actually drive the thing and operate the remotes and things like that. So that is in-person training. When we bring on a larger distributor, same type of a thing, we'll go in and provide training for their sales staff and stuff like that so that they're knowledgeable about our products. And that's one thing that we really want folks to be 
is knowledgeable, whether they're retailing our equipment or whether they are using our equipment. We, we want and we need people to be knowledgeable and passionate about it and just it's just going to make them more effective. No, that makes sense. That makes total sense. It, it, it's one thing to create products. It's another thing for people to know mm -hmm. how to use them and to be able to offer that training. Mm -hmm. And you have a network of instructors also, don't we you? We do. We have what's called the Associate Trainer Program. And these are, some, some are full-time, some are part-time, but they're trainers all around the country that we've vetted and worked with. And we support by sending them training materials and we promote their training opportunities and things like that. But it's a good way to get that message out about medical training and how important it is to be hands-on with this stuff. Um, like I said, the online stuff only goes so far. At a certain point, you got to actually get a tourniquet in your hands, a bandage in your hands, um, and work with that gear. So having that that partnership with a actually a very robust list of instructors around the country, and actually some internationally. Uh, is huge for us. We want to support those trainers um, and we want as many people out there in the world going and getting themselves trained and proficient. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. And when, like I said, the world is normally uh, up and running, I'm at usually the trade shows and events and looking for speaking engagements, running training lanes, supporting competitions and things like that. So, Well, here we are. We were just finished doing three instructional mm -hmm. videos and it's, it's a point that you brought up in the videos and it's a point we drive home all the time. Watching a video doesn't replace hands-on training, whether it's trigger time on the range uh, or medical. But oftentimes, what we find out is there's people out there that they never get that opportunity on the flat range, or they don't get that opportunity taking a medical mm -hmm. class. So at least the videos that we do, absolutely, and the, and the videos you do, is is a at least a baseline yep. of a little bit of education. And what I want it to do is pique their interest. Um, get interested in the equipment, get interested in going and getting that training. And this is kind of a, a teaser, basically, mm -hmm. uh, to get people interested in the topic and understand its level of importance and what exactly is out there. And uh, For some people, the videos that we just did the last few days, it's probably going to be dramatically different than a quotes first aid class that they took 12 or 15 years ago. We're light years ahead of where we were even when I went through EMT and paramedic school. Um, Medicine is kind of like computers. Mm -hmm. It's constantly evolving, constantly changing. Things come in and out of vogue, in and out of fashion. New technologies are developed. Um, new scientific reports drive practices. So it's a constantly evolving field and um, it's never one that's been static and boring. It's constantly evolving. And see, for us, it's about always trying to stay on the cutting edge with mm -hmm. videos because to your point, things are always changing. A new product is released and we have to be able to document it, put it out there for the masses. And um, it's always our hope that someone watching one of our videos, that'll be what, what spurs them to either get the firearms training or mm -hmm. the medical training or whatever it is. Uh, it's, it's so important to have that, that training. I mean, buying a handgun and not knowing how to use it, uh, or going to a range and not having a tourniquet. And if you have a tourniquet, you gotta know how to use it. If it's still wrapped in the cellophane, that's not a good sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I've seen that before. Uh, and I've seen many times on the flat range, you get a class and a lot of students nowadays, they'll have a tourniquet on. But if you pull them aside and ask them, have you ever played with it? Have you ever really mm -hmm. worked with it? Oh, no, no, I just, I just got it. So. It is important. I mean, I really think anyone that has a tourniquet, they ought to be torquing that thing on themselves, see what it feels like. And that's one of the benefits of ours is it's actually, you can train with your duty issued version. You don't have to have a separate training version. So it encourages folks that carry a soft tourniquet to actually get it out, train with it. You can take it to full occlusion thousands of times and it's still gonna be within operational parameters and limits so there's no restrictions on it from that way so there's no excuse not to get it out other than laziness right right absolutely absolutely I also was intrigued by the uh, the blue packs that you had and mm -hmm. uh, if you folks will see our instructional videos shortly you're, you'll be seeing this before you see the instructional videos but um, you have the blue packs uh, of the bandages so those are for training purposes only correct uh, you, you're talking about the combat gauze trainers yes the hemostatic agents yep there are um, the live packets are anywhere from $35 to $40, depending upon where you buy them. Um, 
the live chemical is in them, they're good for five years. Uh, for some folks, that is a significant investment, mm -hmm. and you don't want to waste that level of product on something for, for just practice. So they actually sell a, a, a blue packet of inert training gauze, and it's folded the same way, it feels the same way, you get all the muscle memory of practicing the skill and doing the wound packing, but at a fraction of the cost. And the packets can be resealable, you fold it back up the right way, tuck it back in, and nice. you can pull it back out. Now, if it gets soaked with fake blood or something like that, it's pretty much toast. But um, again, it's a very uh, cost efficient way of being able to practice that skill. But just want to make sure that folks know anytime a, a blue uh, packet of combat gauze is out there, it's a training inert packet, not to put it in their IFAC. Now, for those, I've seen this done before too, where you'll, you'll see a guy with a Ziploc bag, and in that Ziploc bag, you'll have Basically, he went to CVS and mm -hmm. picked from the shelf gauze mm -hmm. and band-aids and, and tape. I mean, what should a person do at the very minimum for their own little IFAC? So the most basic things that need to be in an IFAC is a good windlass based tourniquet. Mm -hmm. If you can afford a hemostatic agent, a hemostatic agent. And again, tourniquets are for wounds that are on an arm or a leg. A hemostatic agent are for places where we can't get a tourniquet on. So side of the neck, high up in the shoulder joint where there's still meat and bones up there, and then down in the pelvis region. There's still ways to sever an artery there, but we can't get a tourniquet on them there. Uh, that hemostatic agent, you combine the good skill of wound packing with the technology of a hemostatic agent, it's gonna be much more effective. And then a really good uh, trauma bandage to be able to secure either the combat gauze or another wound effectively. Um, I'd get a nice pair of medical gloves, medical grade gloves for personal protection, especially if the patient is somebody else that you're not really that familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe a, a, a set of trauma shears uh, to be able to cut clothing out of the way if you needed to. But at, at the very minimum, a windlass based tourniquet, a hemostatic agent, and a good trauma bandage. And the key point is, this is not the boo-boo kit. No, this is, you definitely need a first aid kit for minor boo-boos, band-aids, bottle eye wash, you know, some first aid ointment, that type of thing. The stuff that we talked about here this week and last week were major trauma type injuries. But injuries that if we don't do something in the next three to five minutes, potentially this patient can bleed out and die. Right, right, right. And so, again, we're talking about a major mechanism of injury. How did they get jacked up? Were they shot? Were they stabbed? Did they fall out of a tree stand? Did right. they get impaled on something? Did they get ejected off a motorcycle? Major mechanism of injury, not just they cut their hand on a piece of barbed wire. Now, first aid kit, boo-boo kit, mm -hmm. burn yourself, cut yourself, you're on the range, you're working in a car, what have you. Now you have your individual first aid kit, your IFAC. Um, where should you be taking it? So for me, um, I'm retired law enforcement and a retired paramedic, and I just got into the mental mode of always having that equipment on my person whenever I leave the house, whenever I was, quotes, on duty. Uh, I'm actually here this week to bring the fanny bag back into fashion. That was my main goal. I was going to ask uh, about that. Absolutely. So. This is how I carry concealed. I tell people I was never cool, and I quit riding the fashion train in about 1996, so I'm here to bring the fanny bag back. Uh, that's how I carry concealed, but I also have a tourniquet and a hemostatic agent in there wherever I go. Bare minimum equipment, a tourniquet and a hemostatic agent, I can get busy with that. Um, you definitely need a kit in all of your vehicles not just one kit for three vehicles. Mm. Everybody stays all motivated for about a month and they'll move it from car to car. And then folks tend to get lazy and then they just leave it in one car and you could be in the other car when you really need something. Um, when you're out on the range, definitely have stuff on your person, uh, not just in the car because if somebody has a negligent discharge on the range, that 25 yards to get back to the vehicle might as well be a half mile dependent upon where you've been hit and what's been severed. Um, I, one of the guys I used to work with, he had a great phrase, you got the rest of your life to clear that malfunction. 
you know, you got the rest of your life to get to that tourniquet wherever it is. And it's a whole lot closer if it's on your person than back in the car. Um, so yes, I'd have something in the car. Yes, I'd have something in the range bag, but at a bare minimum, tourniquet and hemostatic agent on your person at all times. And there's a wide array of ways to do that, be it an ankle rig, a belt worn rig, something that affixes to the outside of your body armor. Always have that stuff on your person. When you're out hunting and hiking, something in your bag, something on your bike, mm -hmm. whatever it is, again, it's got to be with you. You know, if you buy the gun and it stays in the safe, it's doing you no good. It's got to be with you. Same thing with the medical kit. Um, maritime environment, um, it's gotta be on the boat. Um, now it needs to be probably packaged and configured a little differently because of the weather and the elements and things like that. You don't want it to get all corroded and rusted. So we package it differently either in a sealed plastic or a um, bag specifically intended to be in a maritime environment. But uh, definitely having it in all of the potential modalities of travel, but then at a bare minimum on your person if you can figure out how to do that. So when it comes to the first aid kits, um, in fact, all the components of an IFAC, everything that we've, we've showcased in these videos, mm -hmm. um, where can our listeners and viewers go to buy this stuff? Obviously, our video's not out yet to tell them where. Where can they go out and get this? So our products are carried by a wide range of retailers and distributors, um, but the easiest way for them to find it is just to come to our website, www.tacmedsolutions.com. Um, you can call us, 864-224-0081, and one of the sales team, customer service folks, will help you out if you have any questions at all. Uh, one of the things we take a lot of pride in is we definitely have kits that we have packaged together, um, and we will sell them that way, but if someone calls with a specific set of requirements or mission specifications, we will customize a kit for them, whether it's one kit or a thousand kits. Um, some people are very limited and restricted as far as what they offer. That's the way it comes. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody calls up and says, I want this, I want that. We're very customizable and um, we get a lot of very positive responses from customers for that. That is awesome, that is awesome. Well, that's gonna be it for this episode of the Make Ready with the Experts podcast. Right, Pete, is that what we call it? And most importantly, first aid, first aid kits, an IFAC, it's no joke. If you're learning how to shoot, if you're learning anything about concealed carry or self-defense, if you're out on a boat, whatever the scenario is, you're just out for a drive with your family, you, you gotta be able to take care of yourself. You gotta be able to have a first aid kit. I mean, and you have to know how to use the stuff that's in that first aid kit. Having a nice little IFAC is wonderful, but if you don't know what to do with it, then you're just throwing your money away. So watch our videos, go to Dan's website, check out their videos. If you have questions, ask, but definitely, definitely, no matter what, carry something with you, have it in your wife's car, your boyfriend's car, husband's car, whatever. Every vehicle should have one, you should have one at home. And uh, it's no joke, if you're gonna carry a gun, you gotta have an IFAC, you gotta have a tourniquet. Dan, thank you. Absolutely, it was Appreciate my pleasure and I really enjoyed the time. Had a great time being out here. We didn't have too much time to abuse you, but when you come back out next time, we'll, we'll mess with you some more. I'm, I'd be here the next day you called me. So thanks <laughs> awesome, for the opportunity. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming Absolutely, out. my pleasure. Thanks folks, take care. Be sure to visit makeready.tv and subscribe today to stream our exclusive content to any device, anywhere, anytime. Patio.